Things I wish I knew when I was first diagnosed with diabetes. Now, I wish I had somebody like the guy on the camera here that was able to sit down with me and say, here are some things you should look out for. And so that's why I'm making this video. A matter of fact, today I was on my way to get my A1C done and I was thinking, God, I wish I had a person that would, would have sat down with me and kind of explained the main things to look out for. And so here's number one, you're gonna be okay. You need to know that. I think when I first got diagnosed, I was so confused about what the doctor had just told me that I have diabetes. I didn't even know what that meant. I thought I was gonna die. Honestly, I thought, well, how long do I have till I die? There's a lot of bad information out there. And unfortunately, um, that information comes to you whether you like it or not. You know, you hear things right away like, well, you may lose your vision. You're gonna, you may lose a toe. You may lose an, uh, a leg, an arm. There's a, there's a lot of things that happen. They happen to people with this disease, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. And so first and foremost, you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. You just, the fact that you're watching this video, really, it tells me that you're looking for the information that you need in order to live a long life. And really that's the goal is to outlive expectations. Whether even before you had diabetes, you thought I'm gonna live till I'm 80. Well, let's get you to 90. And I really wanna help you do that. So first of all, you're gonna be all right. Now, number two thing that I wish somebody told me is that there are differences in diabetes. There, there are different types um, and, and all of them don't matter, but, and, there's a type one, there's the 1 1.5, there's a Mahdi, there's a Lada, there's a type two, there's a type three, there's a lot of types. And that's why my channel is called Type Me because regardless of the type of diabetic you are or type of diabetes that you have, you're you. And um, if the doctor says, you know, take two of these pills and call me in the morning, those two pills aren't gonna do to me what they do to you. you may weigh differently than I weigh. You may have a different um, eating regimen than I have. You may have a different stress level than I have. You may have different hydration uh, habits than I have. All of those things play a part in diabetes. And it, at first, you don't know that. You, you kind of learn that the hard way as you go, as you eat uh, you know, a big plate of nachos and go, whoa, that was not a good decision right now for my diabetes. Um, or if you're prepared and you understand your medications, you can eat that same plate of nachos and it won't affect you. Now, is it the healthiest decision? No, no, I'm not a dietitian, nor am I a doctor, um, but I am a person just one-to-one -one telling you my experiences. So number two, understand that there are different types of diabetes, but most importantly, you need to understand yourself with your type of diabetes, whatever that is. How does your body react to the disease process that you currently have? The number three thing I wish somebody told me when I became a diabetic was that there is a difference between lows and highs in severity and risk, I guess. Now, the first thing they tell you when you become a diabetic is, well, you got a high blood sugar. Well, for whatever reason, you go, you found yourself into an ER or a doctor's office and they were evaluating your sugar for some reason. And the first, you know, they tell you, oh, it's, they tell you a number and you don't even, you're not even really sure what that number represents. Uh, you know, I think for me, it was like, you're 500 or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's a, did I win the prize? I don't know what that means, you know? So... It, that's high, right? Obviously, we want our glucoses to be 70 to um, uh, 120 normally if you're not, if you're a non-diabetic. Um, but 500 is a crazy number. Um, so lows and highs, they can be scary for different reasons. Now, some people can function with high glucose numbers all the time. Matter of fact, some people alternately can function with low glucose numbers all the time, but we don't want to live there. And as a, as a diabetic, 
your goal really is to stay within a range. Um, and, and that range typically is 70 to 170 milligrams per deciliter, I'm speaking. Um, and that's because we live on a roller coaster as diabetics and we're constantly love, trying to um, figure out medication, medications and food, medications and food. And so the better that we can stay within that range, I, I think I'm more successful as a diabetic. Now, are there times where I get high blood sugars? Yeah. Um, if I choose to eat that plate of nachos, yes, it's, it's going to get high. To me, is it worth it? Yes, because I love nachos. Um, to a person who's super healthy, no, that's a really bad decision. As a type 2 diabetic, even harder. All right, number three thing that I wish somebody told me when I was diagnosed with diabetes is that there are highs and there are lows and one is scarier than the other. When I was first diagnosed, I didn't know uh, what it was going to feel like to me to have high blood sugar and what it was going to feel like to me to have low blood sugar. I thought the feeling was going to be the same. Um, for me, my experience is that when I actually, it was around Valentine's Day, I planned this really romantic date um, with my wife. Uh, we lived about three hours away from Scottsdale. I made reservations to this really nice steakhouse. I drove her up and we made it a little early. So we started walking around this mall and immediately I felt like I was going to fall on the ground. I felt dizzy and I didn't feel right and I didn't know why. I had already been diagnosed just previously. I had already been put on type 2 medications for type 2 diabetes because I didn't know what kind I had yet. And um, it was not sitting right with me. Now, I didn't know what that feeling was. I didn't know if I was high. I didn't know if I, my sugar was low. So my first instinct was to eat something because I, I mean, in, in the movies, that's what they do. Oh no, you know, you got, you got the diabetes. You should eat something. I had no idea what was going on in my body. So if my sugar was high and then I decided to eat something, it would have made the problem even worse. And to this day, I honestly can't tell you what was wrong with me because I didn't have a glucometer on me, which is like a rookie mistake. Um, all I knew is that after a while, eating some food, resting, it all kind of worked itself out. And so the first thing you need to know, or the third thing you need to know, is that there are going to be highs and there are going to be lows, and you need to figure your body out. Um, you may, for me, if I get low, I feel sweaty, I feel anxious, I may feel dizzy. I know that now. I didn't know that then. If my sugar is high, I feel tired. And I feel almost drunk is the best way I could put it. <laughs> you feel kind of numb and sleepy and lethargic. Um, but that's how I felt. But your body is different. So you, you need to know that there are highs and there are lows. And you've got to kind of figure out for yourself, understand which is which, so that when you feel that way, you know what's going on. Now, apart from that, there's tech that can help you with that, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, the fourth thing that I wish somebody talked to me about when I was first diagnosed is medications. Medications are, there's a lot of them, right? There's pills, there are insulins, fast acting, slow acting, there is semi-glutides, there's all kinds of stuff, right? That the doctors are gonna prescribe to you, and here's the weird part, with without having any idea of what they're gonna to do to your body. They, they guess, literally, based off of your weight uh, and, and sometimes other things, what medicine to give you and hope that it goes well. And so I didn't know this, but when I was first diagnosed, I thought, okay, um, he's, they gave me pills because they thought I was type two, the pills didn't work, then they gave me insulin because they realized I was type one. And that insulin regimen that they made was so hyper aggressive that I was going low all the time. Well, the doctor didn't know that I 
um, very sensitive to insulin. There's a lot of different reasons for that, um, but <clears throat> um, for whatever reason, I don't take as much as normal people with diabetes take. And so you, you'll have to know what insulins are gonna work for you, work with your doctor on that, but be very cautious um, before going all in on any medication. Um, obviously, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a pharmacist, um, but I'm a person with diabetes and I've been there and I've done that. So understand there are different kinds of medications. If one medicine isn't working for you, ask for a different kind and make sure that the amount that is prescribed to you is reasonable and do your research if you need to. Um, and don't go all the way in on, on any changes in your medication regimen as well without consulting your, your doctors or your endocrinologist. All right, number five, <clears throat> there is such a thing as insulin to carb ratio. Now, if you're a type two diabetic, you take pills, you may take a once a day long acting insulin and you never have to worry about it. Okay, because there's a long acting insulin, it's called basal insulin, and there's a rapid type of insulin. And so <clears throat> the thing that they don't tell you though, is that the insulin um, action duration is different for these, and I'll, I'll get into that in a sec. But first, first of all, insulin to carb ratio. When you take insulin as a type one diabetic, fast acting, you're taking it for a specific reason, because you're eating, or because your sugar's high for whatever other reason. Um, yeah, we won't get into that, but for food. So you're gonna eat. You're about to eat, you count the amount of carbohydrates that you need, and you've formulated some kind of plan that says, if I take 20, 25 grams of carbs, I'm gonna take one unit of insulin, whatever your number is. That, that's an insulin to carb ratio. You need to figure that out for yourself. And the easiest way to do that is, a, I call it the bread test, one piece of bread. One piece of bread is typically 20 to 25 grams of carbohydrates. If you eat a piece of bread, all you have to do is look at your sugar, your glucose number beforehand, if you need to prick yourself or check your CGM. And then after you eat the piece of bread, watch that rise and whatever it peaks at, that's what 25 grams of carbs does to your body, typically, okay? Then take some medicine based off of whatever your regimen is and watch that then fall. And if it falls at the right place, you have, you've got it down. If it falls just short and you're still too high, then you need to change your insulin to carb ratio. If it falls lower, same thing. You need to back off that insulin to carb ratio. And again, work with your nutritionist, work with your endocrinologist for this. But there is such a thing. I wish somebody had told me that there is an insulin to carb ratio that you need to figure out. Because if you don't, you're gonna guess, 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 and be on a roller coaster that you don't wanna be on for years, which is what I did. Because I thought I had it, I thought I had it down. Almost as importantly, or just as important, depending on who you ask, is your basal insulin. That is that long acting basal that you take once a day and it's supposed to last you all long, all day. So this is important too, because if that is off, your reaction to certain foods will also be exaggerated. So for an example, I recently turned 45. When I turned 45, for whatever reason, my body was like, eh, I now need more insulin for everything you do. And so what I had to do is I had to increase my basal insulin, the amount of insulin I give myself once a day that lasts me the whole day, in order for my reaction to be what it normally is to foods, stress, all those things, hydration, all that. 
to make it short and simple, know that your body has different needs for the medications and, and, and try to understand how your body's going to react to your medicines in, in most situations. And it's difficult. It's, the things I just said probably like, oh my God, it's too much. Please rewatch the video if you have to, watch other videos, read a book, whatever you got to do. But you can figure it out for yourself. I, I hope that you do because it's very important to get those two things down. Um, understanding your insulin to carb ratio and that your basal has to be spot on for, for what your needs are. Okay, so here's another one, number six thing I wish somebody told me when I was diagnosed with diabetes. There is such a thing as duration of insulin action. Have you heard of that? So if you have type one diabetes and you take rapid acting insulin, the insulin that you take takes a certain amount of time to actually take effect. It's not, it's not instant. And so there's a peak and then there's an, a duration of action. Okay. So I didn't find this out till I started using pumps. Um, I'm on the Omnipod now, but when you t when you ask the Omnipod for insulin, it gives you insulin right away. It puts it into your body, but it doesn't put it into your veins. It puts it into your sub Q. And so your body has to absorb that insulin. And it takes a little bit of time to do that. For me, it could take up to two hours. So if I eat something right now and I take medicine for it right now, I might go high and then two hours later, see it go down. And that's why we pre bolus try to take it a little bit before food. <clears throat> but after that two hours, it's no longer going to do anything for me. Okay. So if I take, this is how people go low. I'm going to eat some food, bam, insulin. And then an hour later after I eat food, I look and I'm like, Oh Lord, I'm at 300. I should take some more insulin. I haven't peaked yet. And so now I'm stacking insulin on top of insulin. And so what's going to happen is two hours after I eat my meal, it's going to peak and all of a sudden I'm going to go low and I'm going to self correct. I'm going to, I'm going to go, Oh no, I'm going low. I'm going to eat some food. I'm, I may only eat enough food to cover the first peak. But since I stacked that insulin, cause I wasn't patient cause I didn't wait for my insulin duration of two hours. Now I'm going to go low and even lower cause I've stacked that insulin. Does that make sense? So know that there is such a thing as insulin duration action, and it takes a while for your insulin to take effect regardless of what kind of medicine you're taking. It, it takes a amount of time, but don't stack doses while it's taking effect, be patient. And when you know that that duration is over for me, it's two hours. Some people it's longer. Um, then I can safely take more insulin after that. And the last one is tech that I wish when I was diagnosed with diabetes, there was more tech. I think insulin, I think Dexcom G4 was out at the time. It might've been the three. Um, but the first one I got was, I think the four, um, there were big honking things you put on your body and they, and they were able to keep you from having to poke your fingers in order to check your blood glucose. And so what these devices do, they're super helpful, but you got, you need some help. You may need some help setting them up. This channel has tons of videos on all kinds of different ways where you can connect these things to your iPhones, your Androids, your Apple watches, your galaxy watches, sugar pixels, all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, but there's tech out there that is super helpful. Look into the tech options for yourself. They're a lot easier than they used to be. They're a lot less cumbersome than they used to be. This is the G seven. When I had the other ones, I swear I couldn't even sleep on my stomach. It would bother me so much because I felt like I had a, a big old piece of plastic there, which is what it was. Um, but yeah, yeah, know that there is tech options out there 
and 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 speak to your endocrinologist, your primary care physician, and see if you can get some of those things covered by your insurance, so that you can utilize them because they're super helpful. They help you uh, understand your body better, and they help you to uh, anticipate highs and lows, which is what we want to avoid, right? Um, so I hope this video was helpful to you. These are seven things that I wish I knew before or when I was diagnosed with diabetes. Hopefully they're helpful to you and I will see you in the next video.